You may have heard that at least one country has already shut down DeepSeek and heard the rumors that DeepSeek might be shut down in a bunch of other countries. So as a patent attorney with an AI heavy practice, I'm gonna give you the truth about DeepSeek being shut down and all the important details you need to know about it. So to get you caught up, DeepSeek is a chatbot or an LLM similar to ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini, and it accepts prompts in text or images or as documents, and then it outputs responses, just like uh, ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini, or any of these other LLMs. So what makes DeepSeek so special? Well, it's been reported as being as good, if not better than other LLMs, but was trained in only two months on a budget of $5.5 million compared to the $100 million it took to train ChatGPT. And when this new model came out, it caused the US stock market to tank, including having Nvidia lose 17% of its value, which was a market value of almost $600 million, which is a record for a company losing money in one day. So what did DeepSeek do to cause problems that made them get shut down in at least one country, if not multiple countries? So it relates to how the AI model was trained and the data privacy and security concerns that it is causing as well. So Italy has been the first to officially block DeepSeek and it cited insufficient information regarding data collection and storage practices for shutting it down. And as a result, DeepSeek has been blocked in the Apple and Google stores in Italy and the US, South Korea, Taiwan, France, Ireland, and Australia are currently investigating, including a bunch of other countries most likely into the data privacy and security issues. So what is the issue with training DeepSeek that has also caused them issues? So they're being investigated by OpenAI who made ChatGPT and their partner Microsoft for allegedly violating the terms of service of using ChatGPT and for intellectual property infringement and misappropriation. So the problem here is that DeepSeek allegedly used ChatGPT inappropriately to train the DeepSeek model using a process called distillation. So what is this distillation process that has caused DeepSeek so many problems? Well, it has nothing to do with distilling alcohol like to make whiskey or something. Think of it like an advanced AI teacher being used to train a smaller student AI. So let me give you an example, a hypothetical one using ChatGPT and uh, DeepSeek as an example. So a trained teacher LM like ChatGPT is fed a bunch of training input prompts and then ChatGPT of course will naturally output responses to these prompts, okay? So the student LM then is trained, like this would be DeepSeek for instance, it would be trained using the inputs and the outputs. And this is instead of something like how ChatGPT is typically trained, is using big data sets like essentially the whole internet or you know huge amounts of books and chats and things like that instead of using that it's just using the inputs and the outputs from something like ChatGPT to train the DeepSeek model and this is what allows a student LLM to have similar capabilities and possibly even better capabilities but using way less computing power in terms of training and then also running the model. So what is wrong with this distillation process and why does it cause problems for DeepSeek? So companies like OpenAI, of course, don't want their competitors to train rival LLMs using their product. And so therefore it's against the terms of service to use ChatGBT this way. And this is a typical thing with software companies or companies with products. They put limitations on the way that you can use their product, especially with things like software. They say, hey, you have a limited license to use this. And if you use it in any sort of way, it's a violation of terms and service. And so what this creates then, it creates an unauthorized use that could be copyright infringement and could cause other intellectual property issues. It, It could also just generally be considered unethical because a competitor company is using a better trained AI to train their competitor AI. And so they're kind of taking advantage of all the work that the big company has already done, all the money they've put into it, and it it can be kind of seen as being unfair. And this could be directly why DeepSeek was able to make their as good, if not better model on a budget of only $5.5 million and in a span of only two months, which in a lot of ways people say it's unfair competition to use ChatGPT that way, especially when it's against the terms and service of ChatGPT. So what could OpenAI and Microsoft 
do about this? Well, the first thing is they can terminate ChatGPT accounts that are found to be training LLMs or using ChatGPT in any way that is against terms of service. And my understanding is they've already done this. They've shut down a bunch of accounts that are allegedly associated with DeepSeek. And this is sort of the first course of action that you know they're they're going to be doing to stop this from happening in the future. But the damage has already been done in a lot of ways. So you know, DeepSeek is already out there; it's already prol proliferating. So just terminating accounts now really isn't going to be very helpful, and it's going to be kind of whack-a-mole in a lot of ways. So another thing that they can do is they can try to sue for damages caused by improper use and IP infringement. What this would look like is saying, hey, you know, we've been harmed by this. They violated our terms of service, which makes it uh, IP misappropriation or uh, IP infringement, and we deserve damages. They've taken some of the market share. We've lost face as a result. And so there have been economic or monetary damages, and we want to get compensated for that. Um, similarly, they could ask a court for an injunction to shut down or block DeepSeek. So think of like uh, like TikTok. So TikTok was uh, potentially being shut down in the United States. OpenAI or Microsoft could try to have that done. They could potentially also try to have it shut down at the source. So shut down the servers in China, have all the information about DeepSeek destroyed. Another recourse would be to lobby for governments to shut down or fine DeepSeek. Again, a good analogy is what happened with TikTok. TikTok was seen as having data privacy and security issues, and so the government was gonna shut it down. It's hard to know whether that's still gonna happen, but something like that could certainly happen with DeepSeek as well. So what are some challenges if OpenAI and Microsoft are gonna try to do this? Well, the main one is that DeepSeek is a Chinese company. They have limited, if no, presence in the United States. And so it's going to be a lot easier to block DeepSeek in the U.S., activity coming into the U.S., but it's going to be really hard to block activity in China. It's important to understand how DeepSeek works to understand why this is going to make things so difficult. So with any LM, just like DeepSeek, you put in prompts. Or, or you can put in documents or images, things like that. That data then is sent to a server in China at DeepSeek, and the big LLM that's running on these massive servers processes that information that you sent them, and then it'll spit out a response to your question or your documents or whatever sort of query you have. That's gonna be the, the issue here, is because all the activity is going on in China, right? Aside from the sending and receiving of, of information, to and from China, all the all the big processing is going on in China. Okay, so you you can probably imagine it's going to be difficult to get a Chinese court to agree to shut down DeepSeek. They're probably going to be biased against uh, U.S. companies like OpenAI and Microsoft. Another option is getting damages. So if they were to get uh, and get damages in the United States, this would have to be validated and enforced by a Chinese court, which is also going to be really difficult. They could get a, an award for damage in the U.S., but again, in less there's a US company or other entity that's associated with DeepSeek where they could get those damages from, it's going to be very unlikely they're going to be able to recover anything unless they can get a Chinese court to actually validate that judgment. They could sue for damages or sue for an injunction in, in China. But again, the, the Chinese legal system may not be very friendly to that. And there's no guarantee that they would get much traction with those things. Otherwise, it's going to be just a jurisdiction by jurisdiction thing. So they can shut it down in the United States through court actions in the United States, maybe in in Europe through court actions in Europe, but really they're going to have to do it in each of these countries individually if they're not able to shut down or get damages from, from deep seek directly in China. So what about government and political actions? Right now, Italy is the first country to actually block DeepSeek, and they did that because of privacy and security concerns. And this could be a rationale to block DeepSeek in the US or uh, potentially other countries that are doing similar investigations. So it's going to be, it's the US, South Korea, Taiwan, France, Ireland, Australia, and likely others are doing these investigations. This could be a way to put economic and political pressure on China, and it could be done under the auspices of the privacy and security concerns, even if those things don't exist, it could be a way to create a win for people with anti-China politics, especially the United States these days is fairly anti-China. And so in a lot of ways, regardless of whether there's truly privacy and security policies, 
politicians would want to do it just so they can show that they're being hard on China, they're fighting back against Chinese aggression, and they're being competitive against these Chinese companies who are misappropriating uh, intellectual property of U.S. companies. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that you're going to see some governments doing that for legitimate or potentially just political reasons. So what should you do? One of the things is if you want to keep on using DeepSeek, you can download the app onto your phone now. And this is something that people did with TikTok anticipating that TikTok was going to be shut down. So you may be able to download it now, but keep in mind that you're not going to be able to get updates and this could cause the app to be outdated and it could lose functionality and it could have severe security vulnerability. So it's only sort of a, a temporary thing to do. Um, also, it, keep in mind if you're using the web browser version of DeepSeek, that could be completely blocked. It's a lot easier to block websites, you know, things coming in from certain IP addresses or, you know, from certain locations, it's easier to block those sort of things. So for instance, you know, keep in mind that all of your chats and other stuff that you've put into or received from DeepSeek, that could be completely lost. So I don't know about you, but I, I do a lot of work with ChatGPT and Claude and a bunch of other LLMs. And I do a lot of personal research and I do work for this YouTube channel. I, I do a lot of personal things like asking it questions about life goals and all this kind of stuff. And it would be a tragedy if all that information that I've put in and shared and, and all the information I've gotten from ChatGPT were to be lost, that would be terrible. So if you're investing a lot of time and effort in these conversations with DeepSeek, keep in mind that there may come a time where the website is going to be blocked and you may not have access to all that data. You may be able to get around that by maybe using a VPN or going to a location where it's not blocked, but you may have a hard time getting access to that data and it could potentially be completely lost if the deep seat gets shut down. So what should you do to keep your data safe? Now, this really applies to using any LLM, not just DeepSeek. And I don't want to get into the whole thing of, you know, is DeepSeek unsafe? Is OpenAI uh, un unsafe using, uh, using ChatGPT unsafe and all these other LLMs? This really is, applies to all LLMs. The first thing is to understand how the technology works. And I already kind of talked about how you're effectively sending the, the queries and all this data to a remote server, whether that's in China for DeepSeek or whether that's in the United States for OpenAI and ChatGPT. This is, this is gonna be happening with pretty much all of these LLMs. So don't input any sensitive data into these LLMs where you're sending it to a remote server. You don't know what's being done with that. You don't know how it's being stored, who has access to it, whether that could be leaked, whether it could be hacked and you could have all that stuff publicly exposed. So here's sort of what I tell my clients when it comes to any sort of data privacy and security. Assume that anything you put down in an email or a text or that you send over the internet could potentially be viewed by other people. So don't put anything in there that you wouldn't want seen by your parents, by your company, by your spouse, um, by companies and or, or by the government. So you need to be really careful about the things that you put into to LLMs because you have no idea how that's going to be used. Another option though is to run an LLM locally on your phone or on your computer. And DeepSeek is a great example of an open source model where you can actually download a version of the DeepSeek LLM and run it locally. The only issue with that though is that these, uh, the, these LLM models aren't going to be as powerful because to running the Full, the, the full DeepSeek model, it requires these massive servers and a lot of computing power and a lot of energy and a lot of cooling, things like that. So your small phone, which is, is pretty powerful, or your laptop, which is also pretty powerful, is not going to be able to run the full version. It'll run sort of a watered down version of something like DeepSeek or another LM that you download. So it's not going to be as powerful. You may get some functionalities, but using a local model that is going to be more private because the data is just sent to the LLM locally, it's not sent to a remote server. That's gonna be a lot more secure, obviously, since it's only on your personal device, but it's not gonna be more powerful. But what it really comes down to is you have to be using AI so that you don't get left behind. The pace of change is exponentially increasing. It used to be that big software changes didn't happen you know, every few years, you know, every few months, but now we're looking at a time where changes are gonna be happening weekly, if not daily. We're already seeing that with new models coming out after DeepSeek. So you have to be using AI to understand how it works so that you can build up your immune system, as, as I call it, related to using technology. Just as people need to sort of build up an immune system to using the internet and understand how to work in the internet safely, you need to build up an immune system through understanding of using AI so you don't get taken advantage of and don't get 
scammed with AI and have your data stolen or create other issues for yourself.